Today we're looking at the best SMD rework station. It's the 939. Just came in the other day and I was actually expecting some more multimeters uh, in the shipment, but uh, alas, it was only this SMD rework station, but that's okay. Hey, what better time to do a review? So this came all the way from Asia, of course, the 939. Let's take a peek, see what we have inside the box. We have our instruction manual. So it's giving us a little bit of lowdown, telling us exactly what the specifications are. And it is super duper brief. Okay, let's pull this guy out of the box. Start with the main console itself. What do we have? What do we have here? Oh, okay, hey, oh, interesting. Now this particular soldering station, the best 939, it is not the uh, LED, the digital one, it's strictly the uh, old fashioned analog style here. So we have the uh, control mechanism with the temperature settings directly on it. Now, if you're familiar with some of the Heiko units, you can tell this is kind of a, uh, a clone of that. Now, my experience with the best has not always been the best. You know, that pun was gonna come up sooner or later. But I thought, for the price, I can't complain. This was $49 shipped. And that is really cheap. Now that's $49 Canadian. So that's about 37, 38 bucks US. And for that price, I really couldn't pass it up. Now we're gonna pull out the actual iron holder. Now there's a lot of soldering irons on the market these days. So you really have to uh, know what you want. Now, I already have a Weller station, but I thought, hey, what a better time to see what else is out there. And, you know, just like multimeters, if you do a lot of electronics, it's really good to have a few different soldering iron kits. Now, I did have a... Uh, and it makes me really sad to say, but I had this really nice Antex XS25 soldering gun uh, for the past few years. And for some reason, mysteriously, it just decided to bubble. So on the Antex, you've got this uh, plastic housing. And, you know, I've heard of people leaving these things on for weeks unplugged in. I don't know. I left mine on for perhaps three, four hours and it just started to uh, bubble. So that was the end of that Antex and that's too bad because I was using that almost religiously for the past uh, few years. But um, hey, look what we have today. Brand new, best, as they like to say, ESD safe. Now this particular iron only came with the one tip and it's super sharp. So this is definitely like an SMD tip. Now the nice thing about a lot of these uh, stations is that the tips are interchangeable. And this does take a lot of the hacko. Is it hacko or hacko? Boy, I'm gonna say hacko tips. Now this one actually says best right on there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is engraved with the best logo. So you're not going to be able to confuse this one for a hacko tip. But that being said, at least exterior wise, it looks fairly, uh, fairly decent. It's quite a light feeling soldering iron. Um, I'm going to be doing a few different SMD uh, rework stations in the next month or so. This being the first. But uh, my initial opinion was, yeah, this is a pretty light small uh, soldering iron. All right, that's how it goes. 
Now, if we look at the base unit itself, one nice thing about this unit is the fact that it just has that really good feel to it. It feels like it's something half quality. And I'm going to say half quality because in terms of reliability, you know, you just don't know these days when it comes to uh, Chinese products. And like I said, my experience in the past with the best nine, with the best brand um, just hasn't been that great. So uh, fingers crossed this is going to last me a while. I'm hoping. Taking a closer look at the soldering iron itself on the Best 939, I have it alongside your typical generic Asian soldering iron. And as you can see, quite similar. Perhaps the Best 939 is a tad bit shorter. Um, here, I'll put that down so you can see. But generally speaking, they are um, one and the same. They have the same sort of mechanism to remove the soldering iron tip. You simply unscrew, take off the sleeve that actually holds the tip in place, and that exposes the heating element. Now, the Best 939 has been heated up previously. That's why it's a little bit darker. But as you can see, the heating element is identical. Um, the only difference would be actually on this generic iron, you've got a bit of a uh, different um, protective, what am I going to call that? A uh, cylindrical metallic that comes across on camera. So that's a little bit different the way it's uh, covering the, uh, the heating element itself. But really, they are par for the course. And other difference perhaps would be the tip protective rubber on the Best 939. I actually prefer it to the generic one. It has a little more grippy feel to it, which I like. And yes, it's definitely Heiko style colors. And I do really like that blue and yellow. But that being said, they are pretty well one of the same. The other nice thing, of course, is that the Best 939 does accept all of the uh, Heiko tips, the 900M series. And you can get those online approximately five to ten dollars US. And I'd advise you to get them if you can. Otherwise, you will be using these. These are your generic tips. And you know what? They're not that bad. So if you end up using these, hey, literally these cost, I'm not gonna say pennies a piece, but probably around three dollars for these five tips. Now, once again, this station did not ship with the extra tips, but any generic Asian iron these days, usually you're going to get a set of tips. And chances are they're going to fit your best 939 soldering iron. Okay, let's talk a bit about the actual base unit that the soldering iron rests on. Hey, I really, really like this. It has a very nice, non-plasticky, solid build. Yep, that's some sort of metallic, I'm assuming. Could be aluminum perhaps, but it is not plastic, that's for sure. It has good, good feel, feels solid. Put it down, it's got these two rubber feet underneath. This guy's not going anywhere. I mean, good job. You'll notice as well, you've got these eight holes at the top and that is for your spare tips. Now, unfortunately there's a problem with that, as I will demonstrate. Yeah, mm -hmm. weebles wobble, but we don't fall down. Well, anyway, you get the point. So it's not really prime for a storage mechanism for your tips. But that being said, it's still very functional. The other nice thing is the way the iron actually rests inside, and I'll demonstrate here. Put it in. Doesn't wobble. It's in there solid, gets in there with authority. Very, very well done. And the other nice thing, when you actually do have that soldering iron inside the holder, as you can see, there is quite a distance between the iron tip and the back of the holder, at least three quarters of an inch. And that is a good thing because sometimes, some of the cheaper stations as well, you stick the iron in, it's rubbing up against the back. Sometimes it'll get stuck or it'll mess up the tip. No worries here. No, you got a lot of room and 
and no worrying about messing anything up. So Bass did a really good job. And as well, this does ship with a sponge, which I don't normally use. I prefer to use the uh, brass spongy kind of uh, cleaner. I'm not one into the uh, wet sponge way of soldering, but everybody's mileage may vary. It's how you sort of got introduced to soldering. If you want a sponge, that's where it goes. Now, the other thing that's probably worth mentioning as well is the fact that this station will really work with any iron. So maybe at some point you're gonna have your best 939 put away and you're doing something on the bench and oh my gosh, I need, a, I need a place to store my iron. Hey, guess what? No worries. Yeah, it's pretty well compatible with most irons. And once again, you still have that nice distance between the tip and the back of the holder. So yeah, I mean, you can literally mix and match if you want to. This is a very good universal iron holder. Hey, I gotta say this blue and blue looks really good. So let's take a look inside the best 939, shall we? Four Phillips screws underneath. Here we go. Taking a closer look at the power transformer itself, the YFE166X40, the output voltage is designated as 26 volts, input 110 volts. This is the North American power grid. And the output is saying 26 volts, but if we look at the manual here itself, we are looking at a 24 volt output. So uh, some discrepancy in that regards. Uh, if we look at the earth to ground here, we do see in this case at least, um, it is soldered and it's, it's half decent soldering. I've got no complaints, but most importantly, it is crimped. So it is, you know, in some of these uh, generic cheap Asian workstation, uh, workstation uh, soldering workstations, you'll get a lot of this uh, soldering directly to the transformer just because it's got a nice metal base and it's a quick, easy fix. At least here, they have gone through the efforts of actually crimping this properly to the ground. So yeah, that's good to see. As here, we do have the fuse. Uh, it is soldered right onto that PCB, but uh, that's where the fuse is located, right underneath the on-off switch mechanism. And once again, for the housing, uh, yeah, those screws just go directly into uh, plastic. Okay, we're getting up close and personal with the uh, sensitive gate triac. In this case, it's the BT-137-600E by uh, NXP. And these are just um, intended for use with general purpose electronics. They, they do bi-directional switching, phase control. Um, what have you, but uh, there you go. As well with the triac, it does seem to be on there quite well. Um, soldering looks to be okay, and uh, there's no corrosive rust residue or what have you um, on the assembly itself, so fairly clean. Not so pleasant side. Um, we do have the venerable LM358. This is a uh, low power dual op amp, operational amplifier right there. Used in uh, gazillions of different circuits. And once again, I don't know if you can see this. I hope you can. I am I think you can. But um, there is flux residue all over this board. It's like an oasis of crap here. I'm really not impressed. So this is going to have to get cleaned. Um, in a big way before I uh, attempt to plug this in. A lot of cap, uh, caps here. Um, nothing SMD to speak of, it's all uh, through hole. Um, lots of resistors. Uh, this is a one mega ohm resistor. And uh, there's our one LED. And something else that uh, kind of shocked me, and I'll just move it around. 
So remember, this was um, what's actually feeding that display power-wise. Now, look at this. Can you imagine? I'm going to see if I can even get in a little bit closer. Look at that soldering job from hell. Crazy. I mean, what the heck? This is, if this is the best that best can do, uh, yeah. I mean, look, okay, look, I, now I just touched it and voila, comes right off the PCB. So, like, you know, I'm going to refrain from using uh, four letter words here, but I will say what the heck. Now, I didn't do anything. I didn't do any. I didn't play with it. I just noticed how loose it was. And you can see I just touched it and it comes right off the PCB. And this is what is feeding this SMB station. So yeah, that is a huge fail. So obviously I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to touch up the whole damn PCB before I can even use this thing. So uh, yeah, look at that, eh? Pure crap, shame. see this all right um yeah when this uh, pin connector came off of the pcb it actually took um a bit of that pad with it as well so i'm hoping that this is going to go back on without any complications okay so i've got uh, plenty of flux both on the pcb as well as the um, connector itself i'm just going to Heat that up a notch. And you can see just how well that, that Stanol solder just gets in there just like butter. All right, so I have cleaned up the B PCB to the best of my ability. I just used some good old fashioned isopropyl alcohol, some cotton swabs, a flux pen, and there we go. So hopefully we are going to be good to go. And then once again, I had to completely resolder the uh, main power connector here, which was um, basically DOA, and I literally cracked right open on arrival. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this, and we will see if it's lights out in Georgia. Okay, so the moment we've all been waiting for, will this work? Honestly, I'm thinking 50-50. So, three, two, one. Ah! Just kidding, I didn't. Hey, lights on, camera, and action. It works. Ooh, I was a little worried there. But, uh, okay, well, that's, that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah. Definitely something you don't want to do every time you get a new soldering station. But I'm glad we did it. And at least now, hopefully this unit will run without uh, too many problems for the next few years. Fingers crossed. Next, we'll be checking the temperature in terms of how quickly or not so quickly does it take to actually reach the designated temperature. Now, according to the best 939, we are looking at a 
heat recovery of approximately 180 to 200 seconds. So it should take approximately three, three and a half minutes to reach 400 degrees Celsius. That's just under 800 Fahrenheit. So let's see if that actually is the case. And I'm gonna turn on the unit and here we go. So it's heating up slowly but surely. 15 seconds and we're just under 40 degrees Celsius. And you can see I've got that tip right on that thermocouple. So approaching the 30 second mark and we are just under 70 degrees Celsius. Okay, so one of the most important things is how well does this Best 939 actually solder? Whether it's cheap, whether it's expensive, it's all irrelevant when it comes down to it. Real question is, is it any good at soldering? So let's find out. I pulled out an old broken up PCB and this I believe was from an old multimeter actually. Um, and there's been a few good components on here that I've uh, been wanting to rescue. Now on this part of the board here, we have this one nice capacitor. I think it's a 4.7 microfarad. All right, so here we go. Tip is heated and let's see what happens. I'm gonna start by applying some flux. Always like to use some good flux get that solder flowing even when I'm taking something off the MG chemicals now the tip that we're using today for this um, it's not the tip I would normally be using I'm only using this sort of a very pointy this is more of an SMD tip this very pointy uh, conical style tip not ideal for this sort of application ideally you'd want something much more um, beveled such as a flat Tip here. I'm just going to grab one out of the uh... okay so ideally this is what you want something like this for this sort of application or um, a chisel tip again or even I find these uh, bigger blade style tips work great on these older uh, component boards but for this review just because this is what the 939 ships with um, we're gonna go ahead and use this one so let's see how good it is at removing that now normally I use a um, 2.5 miller 2.5 millimeter 1 tenth of an inch um, uh, super wick desoldering braid whatever you want to call it I'm all out of my 2.5 so I have to go down to 1.5 1 16th of an inch ah oh, gosh so between the pointy tip and the really thin desoldering braid, this should be a really good test of uh, just how good or not so good this iron's gonna be. So here we go. Heat it up. Oh yeah. Lots of smoke. There we, now we can see that. Sure, that came off not so bad that first day. a lot of smoke oh look at that folks wow hey that surprised even me so uh, it was probably in there for at least 25 30 years and it is now safe and sound hey not so bad this is the about a six seven year old multimeter dead multimeter PCB one of these El Cheapo and there's a pigtail style fuse right here that I'm gonna take off um, and I'm, believe it or not that looks like it's a slow blow as opposed to a fast blow 
fuse. Interesting. So we'll do the same thing here, and I'm going to apply some more of this desoldering braid. Put on some flux. Heat up that flux a little bit. Wow, look at that smoke just come out of there. Once again, we're using the same tip as previously. How we're getting there. The solder has gone right through the PCB, so we just kind of got to get in there a little bit more. There's the one leg came off. And pigtail number two, because this little piggy went to market. Hey, there we go. So it was relatively painless as well. So as you can see, the uh, best 939 isn't such a slouch in terms of um, desoldering. And you know, why not pull out some of the Stanol solder? This is one of my favorite solders, by the way. 0.5 millimeter Stanol from Germany. It's great stuff. We'll just try doing the opposite. We'll try putting this back on. Because we all know that a multimeter really needs a slow blow fuse. There's lots more um, really interesting multimeter videos coming up too, guys. So uh, stay tuned for those. Now I'm just going to hodgepodge this in. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time worrying about uh, aesthetics here. It's just a dummy board at this point anyway. So, yeah, the, the um, heat dissipation on this iron seems to be fairly decent. It's not just about the tip temperature, but, you know, how that heat is being dissipated across the PCB. ESD safe. You see it everywhere. Cheap soldering stations. Expensive soldering stations. What does it mean? What does ESD safe really, really mean? Well, technically, it means that when an electrical charge starts to build up, it's going to become dissipated, thus preventing it from reaching any sort of potentially dangerous level. So in a nutshell, if you take out your soldering iron and you start soldering one of these components, <laughs> yeah, that's not supposed to happen. Only problem is, ESD safe is used really loosely. So personally, take it with a grain of salt. When you see a cheap workstation and it says ESD safe, eh, I don't think so. Now the problem with this is that in expensive stations, well, it's almost unbelievably impossible for them to put dissipative, that's a tough word to say. Say that three times fast. Dissipative, dissipative. <laughs> That's really expensive. You're basically molding chemicals into the plastics to create this sort of electrical barrier. 
it ain't cheap. And the chances are it's not even gonna happen with these cheap workstations. Ideally, ESD safe station should be made of static dissipative material and it should have a path to the ground. So this includes the hand grip, the wire insulation, the control, the power unit, everything put together ensures that a station is truly ESD safe. Basically, there's little if any risk. And of course, yeah, you should have it on an ESD mat. And yep, no problems here in terms of earth to ground, A-OK. -okay. But something else that's important that you don't hear a whole lot of these days is electric field and magnetic field radiation. Let's face it, it's everywhere. Cell phones, laptops, microwave ovens. We're always embedded in this sort of field. Now, that's part of life to a certain degree, and we're all made up of some sort of uh, electrical charge. But that being said, it's been proven that high fields of this types of radiation, whether it's electric or magnetic, can have potential health risks. I've got my small electromagnetic radiation tester here, and it is in front of the best 939 right now. And you can see we have uh, on the H field, which is the magnetic field measured in microteslas, we have nothing. It is clean. And on the electric field, that's also measured in volts per meter, we have a very small amount, around 18 to 20 VMs. Now I'm gonna turn on the unit and see what happens. Wow. Okay, so. The electric field has definitely gone up. We're up to about 170 VM. And I'm gonna move this to the front of the unit. See if the, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So we're over 100 microteslas on the magnetic field radiation. That's high. Turn it off. Nothing. Let's turn it back on. Wow. So there's definitely some electromagnetic radiation being emitted. Now I'm standing in front of a typical household microwave and it is turned on and look at that. We have nothing in the electrical field, but on the magnetic field we have a reading of around 25 microteslas. But that's literally three to four times less than in front of that soldering station. And this is with the microwave turned on. Huh, kind of scary. <laughs> Closing thoughts on the BST from BEST 939 soldering workstation. Unfortunately, I find this tool hard to recommend. It's too bad, really, because at first I was hoping that this could be a cheap, inexpensive soldering station that would not only work, but would sort of prove that even though there is such thing as a price point, it's not always how much you spend, but how you spend it. Unfortunately, once we got inside the Best 939, it was downhill. Soldering-wise was a complete disaster. That pin to the transformer literally came right off the PCB. That's just unacceptable. There's got to be a lot better Q&A from BEST when it comes to soldering stations because this is proof that without it, you never know what you're going to get. It's too bad because I really wanted to like this workstation. It did a pretty darn good job in terms of just basic soldering. You saw how well those components literally came right off the board. One really big problem is the fact that the heating mechanism here has no temperature indication. So whether you have it set to 300 degrees, 400 degrees, 500 degrees, it doesn't really matter because you'll never really know what your temperature is unless you have a separate thermocouple sitting around to measure your tip every time you want to solder. There's just no indicator on this device to tell you when your soldering temperature has reached the temperature that you need. Besides the pathetic soldering job, it also had a pretty high electromagnetic radiation field being emitted. Now, it's not to say that 
most devices don't have some sort of EMF associated with it, but in this case, it just seemed to be generally on the high side. I do like the fact that you can mix and match with other tips, especially the Heiko tips. That's really good bang for the buck, and it means that this is a very versatile workstation in terms of how many tips you can or cannot use. Also, the general mechanics um, are quite well designed. Like I said, the actual base unit itself, the holding mechanism for the soldering iron is nice. It's solid, it's metallic, it's not plastic, and it's just a lot better than a lot of the other El Cheapo soldering stations out there. But unfortunately, if we put all of the good and the bad together, it's just too much of the bad to recommend. I'm giving the best 939 two out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.